Starting a preparation journey to conquer SnowPro course certification exam might seem like a difficult task filled with doubts and uncertainties. The idea of sitting in one place for two hours reading those multiple choice questions can be intimidating. I cleared my core as well as advanced certification at first attempt, but I had a lot of fear and nervousness. And in this video, I would like to share my strategy plus what I have learned from my subscriber base via direct messages and try to provide you a guidance that can help you to devise your own strategy not only to clear the exam at first attempt but also score 100% or near 100%. I am not going to give any shortcut here. The success comes with proper planning, hard work and bit of luck. My previous Snowflake SnowPro course certification videos, Snowflake tutorials and full practice test plus topic wise mock test have helped my subscriber to crack the exam at first attempt with very high score. All these comments shared here are publicly available as a part of my video comment. You can go and check them and also learn from them. So if you want to score high at first attempt and that is your goal then stay until the end of this video. We are going to discuss and find the answer for what resources can I use to study for the snow pro core exam how should i approach studying snowflake content for the exam what topic should i prioritize while studying we have learned that we have total six domain and each of these domain are having subdomain and then subtopics how can i effectively practice hands on exercise for the exam snowflake also suggests to have around 6 months of working experience before you appear for the exam and you will certainly get sql based question during the exam how much time should I dedicate to preparing for the exam? Should it be 7 days or 4 to 6 weeks or more than that? What type of questions can I expect in the exam? How can I simulate real exam conditions during my preparation? What are the common pitfalls to avoid during the exam? Last minute tips for the day of the exam. We are going to discuss everything and try to fetch an answer to make sure that you get your preparation well for the snow pro snow core certification exam welcome back to my channel data engineering simplified and to this snow pro certification strategy guide tutorial my previous video everything about snow pro certification exam has already answered questions like what is exam structure its complexity level exam syllabus and preparation time and many more we are not going to talk about it in this video and if you have not watched that video i request you to go back and watch it it has got all the answer about snow pro certification except the strategy part and if you are interested to see real exam questions along with their answer then you can also watch this video before we proceed i have a quick note to share these videos are recorded in 4k resolution follow the instructions for better resolution and to learn this video faster let's start the SnowPro core certification syllabus is divided into six domain and each of this domain has a different weightage. Subdomain is easy to understand and some domain need a bit of hands-on practices. If you avoid hands-on practice, there is a good chance that you might not be able to respond to the correct answer during the exam, specifically the medium complexity questions and scenario based questions. So the first thing you will have in your mind, where to go and what to read. How deep should I go? because there are so many things to cover. My first recommendation is to go to learn.snowflake.com, visit the view course under the certification page and download the study guide. Scroll down study resources and it has link to different training videos and content. Clicking on those links will direct you to learn.snowflake.com again and you can study the given content then it will also have sample questions for your certification exam preparation this approach is little long and you certainly need a patient to go through these static content supported by short videos and presentation the good part that you will get questions from snowflake that you can practice and there are around 5 to 7 percent questions that appears from these examples questions as is or with a little bit of tweaking for me, it took roughly three weeks to complete all these contents provided for SnowPro course certification and I was able to score 80 to 85 percentage 
from all those sample questions and that boosted my confidence. My second study reference material is Snowflake official document page. If you refer the Snowflake study guide, the last page of the documentation has a section that refers to the Snowflake documentation and it says if you are studying for SnowPro Core certification exam, make sure you are up to date with what's new with Snowflake. If you click on the link, it redirects you to docs.snowflake.com release page where all the new features are available. You have to pay attention what features are available in the preview mode, what features are available in the GA mode. Referring to the latest Snowflake documentation is very very important. If you are new and if you have never gone through the Snowflake documentation page, you can click on getting started tab and it has well organized tutorial link appearing on the left pan. You should start with the concept link. It has many important topics like architecture, cloud platform, cloud region, edition, etc. Each of this link also has a video content to give you better clarity about Snowflake architecture. Moving down, you will get additional tutorials like Snowflake in 20 minutes, bulk loading, semi-structure data and quick start guide. If you really want to learn Snowflake deep enough along with certification exam, my recommendation is to spend some time going through this content too. During my certification preparation, I spent around two weeks going through and practicing the SQL instruction, loading data and playing with different features of Snowflake using the Snowflake legacy web UI. However, the legacy web UI support has stopped, so you have to practice everything using SnowSite web UI. And believe me, all those learning would certainly help you. So we have seen Snowflake's official documentation and content provided by Snowflake. As we discussed, many folks who are looking for additional material and much simpler explanation, if you wish, you can also watch my Snowflake tutorials and SnowPro topic-wise explanation series. All these videos are hands-on videos. You will not only get ready for the certification, but you would also learn a lot from this video to use your skills on your day-to-day -day development work. Depending upon where you are in your Snowflake journey, you can combine all this study material or based on your confidence level, you can design your study plan. But remember one thing, as and when you finish your domain or a subdomain, make sure you validate your understanding with mock test. More and more you practice, you will minimize the knowledge gap and increase your success rate. Let's discuss how to prioritize this domain, subdomain and topics. Each domain has different weightage and that itself indicate how you should prioritize. However, some of the domain has many theory part, needs more study and some of them expect hands-on alongside your conceptual understanding. So review all the subdomains and subtopics under each of the main domain. In my opinion and in my experience, domain 4 and domain 5 needs more hands-on practice over other domain. My recommendation to my audience is start with first domain which is nothing but Snowflake Data Cloud Features and Architecture, followed by Domain 4 and 5. This will give you more confidence how to use Snowflake and you will learn a lot about them. Then go for Domain 3 that covers Performance Concept. Performance Concept may need little bit of hands-on because sometimes there are situational questions which can be answered only if you have practiced Snowflake using SnowSight. Then go for Domain 6, Data Protection and Data Sharing and finally, complete the domain 2, which is account access and security. I would also suggest to watch my specific chapter that covers some of the topics in detail. For example, you can watch chapter 1, chapter 3, chapter 6 and chapter 8 from my Snowflake tutorial, which will give you a lot more practical knowledge for your domain 1. You can watch chapter 9 and chapter 10, which supports data loading and continuous data ingestion. Watch chapter 3 that is primarily focused on micropartition and associated with domain 3. Chapter 14, 15 and 16 can help you to understand domain 6 better and chapter 20 is all about role based access control and discretionary access control and I would highly request you to go through this particular chapter to build a solid understanding around security and data protection in Snowflake. So after you complete watching this video, you can always practice 15 to 20 questions from my practice test to make sure that you do not have any knowledge gap. So the next important question we are going to ask, how much time should I dedicate? Because 
we have a day job and we have a other commitment i have seen folks clearing certification exam in 7 days and i have also seen even experienced folks failing the exam even after 2 months of preparation if you have basic working knowledge with snowflake platform and or working in a snowflake project or a similar data project in my opinion 5 to 6 weeks seem to be a good duration and if you find yourself that you are not fully ready even after 6 weeks you can always reschedule your exam so the best duration to have your preparation journey to run for 4 to 5 weeks and keep one week as a buffer week if you stretch beyond 6 weeks that wouldn't be good because you will find your preparation journey is very very boring and you will lose interest and i have seen people procrastinating giving longer time will have a higher risk of failure so stay within the limit of 4 to 6 weeks and make sure you divide all your domain sub domain and topic to be completed within 4 to 5 weeks and one week for revision and filling the knowledge gap next we will discuss what type of questions will appear and what kind of complexity will it have we can classify the questions into three broader categories the first category is true and false category most of the true and false questions will be pretty straightforward second category is multiple choice question where you have to select only one option the third category is multiple select where you have to pick more than one correct answer and snowflake exam will guide you how many options you have to select if it is more than one i have also seen one or two question where all the answer were correct and snowflake did not hint how many options are correct when we talk about the percentage contribution of this different classes you may expect around 5 to 7% of true and false question around 70 to 85% of multiple choice questions where you have to select only one correct answer and around 7 to 15% of multiple select question where you have to select more than one correct answer and these questions will be generally tricky or scenario based when it comes to a difficult level which is a different way of classifying all those questions we can again categorize them in three different classes simple questions medium complexity questions and tricky or scenario based question specifically coming from data loading and data unloading or role based access control sequels the simple questions will be very short and will be very straight from the snowflake conceptual part and you can answer them in just 5 to 7 second this way if you are well prepared you can finish those 50 to 60 question in less than 30 to 40 minutes there will be around 20 to 30% question that will surely fall under medium complexity category and it will force you to think before you can answer them this question will also have at least two option which sounds as if both are correct finally there will be 15% question that will be tricky and they will be pit lengthy with description or scenario based situation and will have highest chance of mistake they will also have multiple select option or a situation that will be built on the top of your core snowflake concept so you can design your study plan considering the fact shown here now the next big question you will have where can i simulate real exam to boost my confidence you can certainly go to learn.snowflake.com and it has one sample exam and if you wish you can also buy paid content to support my audience i have already published a series of videos that has 60 plus questions per domain it may take 15 to 20 minutes to complete those mock test if you practice them on a regular basis you will gain a good confidence i have got a very good and positive feedback from my audience about the quality of my questions and they suggested that these contents are better than the paid content so choice is yours you can watch my content or you can also buy the paid content available in other platforms let's discuss couple of important points that will be useful before and during the exam so we all know there is no negative marking so make sure that you attempt all questions all the new features which are available in the preview mode will not be asked during the exams you will certainly get sql related questions so you spend some time running the sql statements is no site related web ui questions will also be asked exam may ask many scenario or situational based question specifically from the stored procedures with the transaction some syntax from json snowflake scripting stream task task tree and specifically with their limitations data unloading questions and their limitations external functions and performance and many more questions may come from all the domain and it will be very well distributed
Here are few key points that we have learned in our previous video. If you want to review them again, then you can pause and review them. One important point that nobody will tell you. When you give your mock test using learn.snowflake.com, the platform does not run in a proctored mode. So there is no latency and the navigation works very fast. But in the real exam, you will notice a sluggishness. Every time you click on the next button, the screen will take roughly 3 to 5 seconds to load the next question. So just be ready for such situation. And if you would like to know what you have to do before the exam and what you have to do during the exam, make sure you watch my previous chapter which gives you complete detail. I hope you have got a good level of understanding how to cover all the study content and set a goal to clear the exam at first attempt and score as high as possible. Feel free to share your thoughts below in the comment box. You can also reach out to me to my Instagram account if you have any specific queries and question. Thank you for watching and if you have learned something valuable from this video, don't forget to press the like button. Happy learning and keep growing.